Welcome to DBA Workshop channel. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please subscribe. Let's start. GIS in Agriculture. Topics. What is GIS? GIS means Geographical Information System. It is a structured integration of hardware and software. It is a systematic way in which we talk about uh, spatial data and its operations. For example, if we are collecting a spatial data and we are capturing it, we are storing it and we are displaying it and we are also have to update spatial data, we have to manipulate it and we have to analyze it. All those things are studied and done in GIS. The subjects where we study GIS, these are the subjects where we study GIS. So why we need a GIS? Because we have a different kind of a sources where we have a spatial data and we have to integrate it. So it deals with the real life and data is continuously keep on changing and we need a quality data and we need a system where we could capture this data and we could retrieve it as and when we require and we also need a manipulation on this data so that we can be used it analyze it and use it for our benefit so when we store a special data we have to store the features about that data so data about data that means features about the data is called a metadata so when we store the spatial data we have to store the metadata that means features about that data with those spatial data GIS field relies on these four fields computer science database statistics and artificial intelligence GIS components hardware and software in order to create a GIS we need a hardware and we need a software all the graphical devices we use to store a GIS and manipulate a GIS and analyze a GIS are called hardware these devices could be plotters scanners it could be a uh, different kind of a processor CPU we also use three tire architecture application for GIS three tire architecture means we have a client machines that is a client machines and then we could have a middleware where we have a web servers and then on the top of it we have a servers so that create a three tier architecture client middleware and server software GS also require a software to store and manipulate the data for example DBMS we have a different kind of a, a GS software up level DBMS also provide features to store GIS for example Oracle spatial database data what kind of a data it is if we talk about a coordinates it is a vector data if you're talking about two or more points and connecting them we are creating lines and with the help of lines if we are creating a closed set of lines we are creating polygons so that category we call vector data what are vector layers? Vector layers means, for example, digitized maps or features extracted from images, for example, aerial images, satellite images, and scan map images. If you're talking about a layers, that is called vector layers. Next, raster data. Raster data is a continuous grid of cells. It could be in two dimension. It could be in three dimension for example cubic cells 
example of categorical raster data is uh, like if we are storing soil type, vegetation type and land suitability. So for example if we store the coordinates of a field and we have to find what kind of land for that particular coordinate. So that means we are talking about a category of that coordinate of a field and for that we require a category table. So these kind of data we call it raster data, categorical raster data. Sometimes we are talking about uh, elevations. So we use a dig digital elevation model and we are talking about of each pixel or of each coordinate what kind of uh, elevation value. So that is studied in continuously raster images. So this kind of a data is continuously raster images. Next people. People who are using the GIS and people who are just creating the maps like a cartographers, surveyors who just survey the land and updating the GIS system and creating the GIS system and the users of GIS system who are using and manipulating and analyzing the data over there are the people who use the GIS system. Characteristic of data in GIS. Since we are talking about a special data, so it has a, some kind of a characteristics. This is a complex part. If we are talking about a topological and spatial relationship and its integrity rules, for example, if we have a coordinate points, lines or polygons, so we have to store the coordinates related to those points and its what are its location and what are its features related to those points, lines and polygons. It is also time based because model may change over time. It is a dynamic data and quantitatively quality. It also requires what kind of a quality we have for example accuracy of spatial coordinates the position of objects how accurate it is it also deals with how we create a 3d objects like polygons and its facets it also talk about thematic values I mean what kind of property and quality of that objects it could have a fuzzy objects we are not very sure what kind of a location and attribute it have then we categorize it, category, categorize it as a fuzzy objects entity data for example if we are talking about a forest rivers roads and buildings so we call it a entity a data related to those entities field based data for example if you are you are talking about a terrains then its attribute vary in space so we call it field based data it also store data quality I mean how accurate the data is and quality and quantity with respect to coordinate and position of objects JS has some kind of a constraints for example if you're talking about uh, entities or uh, coordinates so obviously these entities would have uh, some relationship with the other entities and relationship with the features so those kind of uh, constraints we have to maintain we cannot simply store the coordinates we have to study what kind of uh, relationship with those objects with other objects so these constraints has to be followed when we store a GIS data topological constraints for example if you are storing about a buildings and uh, buildings we have a concept of a parcel parcel means it is a kind of a lines and polygons so lines and polygons are stored in such a way and we call it a parcel so for example we store uh, buildings by using the lines and polygons and we have some kind of a rules that parcel boundary cannot cross the building outline and building 
two buildings can share an edge these kind of a rules or constraints or restrictions have to be followed so these are the conditions and rules has to followed when we store spatial data temporal constraints this means time based component of it for example if you're talking about a bridge so we have we are storing we are not only storing its location we are storing what kind of a location coordinates its geometry and its time component also what changes occurred over time so these are also these things also need to be maintained when we store a GIS data so we already know it is a geospatial data that means a data that has a geographical component okay let's talk about the GIS in agriculture this is a requirement that we require a cost-effective solution we require to know what kind of climate conditions we need to know what kind of a seeds and what kind of a yields we could have S we need to know what kind of a resources we have so this kind of a data we need to collect we need to track that data and we have to analyze those data to do the improvements so we do the research on it we do the planning and we apply the results based upon our research and planning to do this we use natural resources like soil water livestock plant genetics fisheries forest climate rainfall and topology we study all those things with the help of GIS so that our goal can be achieved for example if you're talking about agriculture mapping the goal goal is to provide a protective environment and provide a excellent nutrition crops so first of all we need to estimate what kind of a crop yields we could get from here estimate what kind of a soil health we could have identify what kind of erosion problem we could have and what kind of its remedies to get an accurate crop estimate and avoid the losses we need agriculture mapping so this agriculture mapping using GIS is very good for productivity it also uh, provides employment and it also increases the income of farmers JS uses different kind of a tools it, it, it uses it can be used as online web resources so the main function of GIS in agriculture is to just do the welfare of farmers and it increases the productivity employment and income it also can help in forecasting using multi spectral imagery collected by satellites again GIS helps in analyzing the environment visualize the environment it can do the remedy in time it can help in creating the workflow it maintain the soil it can help in maintaining the soil nutrition and plant health it helps to boost the agriculture industry to white losses GIS help in better management of land and its resources GIS in agriculture GIS helps in analyzing the environment visualizing the environment and uh, finding the problems and its remedy before the losses occur so hence it increase the production and reduce the cost for example agricultural GIS it's a crop monitoring technology it monitor the crop it it just to do the management of the soil it just to how better we can do the irrigation of farms it uses geometric technology this technology is used to create the maps it can identify it, uh, the problems it just uh, create the samples of current and future variation of various features of the field positions geometric technology is used for example to uh, know 
what kind of a temperature on various uh, field positions and uh, it can just uh, monitor the crop it can see that uh, uh, what kind of a problems in uh, uh, which section of the field and it can uh, based upon those data we can just uh, do the remedy uh, before the losses occur so why we need it its goal is to do the accurate mapping of the geographical and geological features of the farm it helps the scientists and farmers to create more effective and efficient farming techniques it helps in taking the corrective action in time for example better utilization of the fertilizers treating pest and weed infections and uh, protecting the fields and natural resources as well uh, one example is uh, just a smart farming. Smart farming means using the sensors in the field. And it also uses the satellites. So based upon this, it just continuously collect the data. And uh, by doing this advanced technology data collection, uh, farmers can easily know where to use what kind of resources it can know that where are the nutrients are less where the crop health is not good or where the crop health is very good so it it can uh, do the remedy action before in time so this just boost the productivity and uh, helps the farmers a lot nowadays farming is getting more advanced uh, for example using this precision equipment internet of things sensors accurators geopositioning systems and big data and unmanned aerial vehicles and use of the robotics etc helps a farmer a lot benefits of precision agriculture it helps the farmers to timely collect the geospatial information on the soil plant requirements so it can do a site specific treatment and uh, helps a farmers to do a corrective action so in turn it helps in increasing the agriculture production and protect the environment also Smart farming is a use of high technology tools that are more accurate and cost effective and user friendly.